are able to name an unchanged team for the starts of today's monster final. The only sub used against Clare was Derek Barrett, and then only as a blood substitution. The backs drew all round applause for the manner in which they went about their business three weeks ago when Wayne Sherlock shaded the accolade man of the match from newcomers Tom Kenny and Ronan Curran. Certain to be watched with care today are leading scorers Joe Dean and Satanta O'Halpine. Between them, they hit 1-5 from play in the semi-final, while improved performances, I think, are sought from Ben O'Connor and Tim McCarthy, both on that half-forward line. So that's Cork. The Munster champions have nominated these 15 players to defend their provincial crown. One change from the team that finally saw the challenge of Limerick as Owen McGrath replaces Peter Queeley. Well, the numbers will be right, but where will James Murray and Declan Prendergast play? To mention just two, well, that's a cause of some speculation. Likewise, the partnership in midfield could see a twist or two, but Tony Brown does play. Whatever about the shape of the Waterford forward line, there's no denying the qualities of Paul Flynn, top scorer most years, and, of course, Ken McGrath, a little quiet this year, while the exact composition of the inside forward line is a secret soon to be shared with all by the match strategist, led, of course, by Justin McCarthy. Well, it's nothing new for Justin, of course, to be facing his native county. It happened also when he was with Clare. Before the action, our on the Viet. of 50,000 people are gathered in Tom Semple's famous hurling field here in the centre of Thurles in County Tipperary. All is in readiness and Pat O'Connor takes charge of his second monster hurling final. The last was 1997 and then it was Clare against Tipperary. Mention of Tipperary, they've won the monster minor final for the third year in a row, a two points win against Cork. Waterford from right to left, monster champions up against the challengers and favourites in the minds of many and I see it uh, straight away a bit of action taking place at the other end of the field but play does continue in this the start of the 114th monster hurling final there we saw a little bit of action between Pat Mulcahy and Paul Flynn who switched into full forward straight away no great surprise there Dave Bennett has gone into midfield There'll be switches aplenty once the match settles down. Turning around here, Fergal Hartley. The man who brought that monster cut back to Waterford carried it too far and it's a free in. Cyril Farrell. Yeah, Joe Rim was started. Tom Feeney's gone cornerback. Brian Green is, pick, is picking up Joe Dean. Uh, James Murray has gone wing back and Declan Prendergast has gone back cornerback. All over the place. Declan Binners is midfield and Paul Finn is full forward. Like we, we predicted that this would happen and I suppose Cork would be kind of waiting for these things to happen. Walter won the toss, Jerry, and even if Cork won the toss, I would think the play against it. Traditionally, they always go against the breeze, and there's a fair breeze going into the Calliope end. The law has been laid down to Fergal Hartley and Niall McCarthy, the man he's marking, the centre-half forward from Carrick Tool. John Gardner, the free-taker, bidding to give Cork the lead. That is tailing, and it's gone wide. First one of the match coming just after a minute. Both sides fired up for the match. Passionate followers have come here as well. They estimate that about 25,000 Corkonians are present here. And uh, roughly the same number have come from Waterford. Huge puck out by Stephen Frampton, batted away by Ronan Curran. Back in again it comes from Owen Kelly, and he sweeps it over the bar. Good start. Kelly gives Waterford the lead, playing in what is his seventh championship match. Lovely strike.
great action. It's his 14th ever point in Championship hurling. Well, it's exactly the start that Waterford has required. Now they'll want to tag on a few more and unsettle Cork. Incidentally, Owen Kelly is playing in the half forward line. That's not unexpected. He's being marked by Sean O'Gohalpine. Dave Bennett, the free taker, dropping it in towards Paul Flynn. Attempting to get the stick to it there was Owen McGrath. Cork standing firm. They get it away out as far as Tom Kenny, the wing back from Grenada. Line ball. The breeze is swirling. Very difficult to predict. Donald O'Grady here in charge of Cork in the second Munster Championship match of the year and his first Munster final in charge. He's looking on now. And I think it is Paul Flynn who is down nursing an injury. He was involved before the ball was even thrown in with Pat Mulcahy from Newton Chandrum. The referee has gone back to check with his umpires. And the Waterford team doctor, Tom Higgins, going in to do his job there. And it could be a substitute is required immediately because the referee is making the indication that it's going to be a temporary substitution. Yeah, there was a high ball going in that time. It's a good substitution as such. No, he'd be all right, it's just a catch. Great atmosphere, wonderful colour. Some just going in a little bit, and Paul Flynn's going to need attention. And the man coming in wearing the yellow armband is his immediate substitute, and that is Peter Queeley. Queeley's come into the half forward line. Andy Maloney's drifted inside on Mulcahy. Line ball to be taken by Owen Murphy, UCC student. This is Mickey O'Connell from Middleton, outside here towards John Gardner and Ronan Curran lobbing it down, hardly meeting it. Into space, John Milan has discarded the black helmet inside seconds of the start of the game. Dermot O'Sullivan's against him, down he goes. It's a free into Waterford and a chance of another score. Milan is fired up just like Satanto Halbin was fired up in the early minutes against Clare, but that was in the semi-final. This is where there's silverware on offer. Yeah, Jerry, he would have the pace on, on Jim Dussulman very, very fast and trying to make use of it. It was rumoured all week that O'Sullivan hadn't been training, had a virus, so, you know, Milan should use the legs on him if he can. Well, O'Sullivan hasn't trained for the best part of three weeks since the Clare match. And that is over the bar. Another fine strike, this time it's by the man playing in the midfield, wearing number 15, Dave Bennett, taking over the free-taking, momentarily at least, from Paul Flynn, 2-0. So Cork, if Waterford are going to run at them and concede freeze, well, that would be the height of folly. Timmy McCarthy, Cork yet to settle. Waterford not allowing them that. It's a great position from a Waterford point of view. They've gone into the match, outsiders, they are champions, they've been written off by so many people. Is there another huge game and a much longer season in this team? They'd like to think so. Oh, Halpin cutting it up towards Niall McCarthy. One back, however, by Dave Bennett. He's playing very deep. Good play by Ronan Curran, the bars man, towards McCarthy. Niall McCarthy gathering in well on the left hand, taking on his man, Fergal Hartley. Dropping it inside. Difficult one, Satanto Halpin has it. Awkward angle, it's a goal! Asante. He has struck, uh, Sandy Claus has struck a fantastic goal, it came in short, he made it across, goalie all position, left hand is struck in the back of the net. Not even six minutes are gone, and the big man from the pier shake scores his first goal in championship hurling at senior level. McCarthy fed it in, he won his battle against the goalkeeper and against Declan Prendergast and knocked it into the back of the net. The man who was born in Australia and polished off in Fairhill in Cork with the Pearshick scores. Ben O'Connor here. McCarthy coming in to try and help him. They try to dig it out of midfield. Ben gets a stick to it. Gardner. Well, he was assured, but he couldn't place it with his usual accuracy. Wow, what a pick-up that was and what a goal. Yeah, Jared, that will wrap well for that because we're in a nice position. They've got the first two scores from Hatfield off. There is a strong breeze blow. And if there was a fault to be found with Cork last time out, as we watched Justin McCarthy reintroduce 
his star Paul Flynn, it might be that they haven't been getting a lot of goals. Not a bad start here. Peter Quilly's come back off. Didn't the ball, I think. And Paul Flynn goes back in. Andy Maloney indicating that he's going to switch with him. And Flynn has gone into top of the left. Murphy hitting it in towards Milan. Nice balance of control, getting away from O'Sullivan. He's causing problems for David O'Sullivan. And this is in the early stages, getting it on his left-hand side. He strikes well, and he's put it over. John Milan from the Dallas Art Club. Well, he's won a free, now he's won a point off Dermot O'Sullivan. Yeah, he has the legs and the fit, a lovely line ball across the north to left. But like, it's early days yet, O'Sullivan probably thinks again, but Milan has legs, and Cork to be shouting his turnover carry, but he's using the pace and a fantastic score. So the teams are level. Donald O'Cusack about to pop this one out, playing in his fifth championship season. In those five seasons, he's played for four different coaches. Alan Brown was trying to dig it out, but it's uh, Andy Maloney. Forward here towards Ken McGrath, high up into the air, hoping the wind will carry it on for him. That was Mokahi touching it down, coming in here and striking it brilliantly into the back of the net. It's John oh, Milan again. Once again, he's done it. Long high ball coming in, half defence of Cogges underneath it. Tack Mokahi couldn't get to it, brought back to Milan and a fantastic score. He's on fire at the moment. Cork will be taken off to of, of, of him with the Sullivan. Well, they'll surely make some rearrangement here of their forces. Mokahi just batted it down. In came the predator, John Milan. And a goal and a point now after eight minutes of play. And once again, the referee haunting the play and going in to watch what happens here in reprise once again. You can see Milan belted it past Donald Okuzak. Good strike. Yeah, Joe, can't look at upset because. He, he was facing the ball when he was kind of pushed off it, but that's that's championship hurling as such. It was a great goal. Okay, that being restrained there by Wayne Sherlock, I think it is safe to have calmed down. Plenty of time left in this match. But it's 1-3 to a goal. Waterford lead. They've got the wind. They are the champions. Andy Baloney has gone to left half forward, and he's on Tom Kenny. Well, Alan Brown couldn't contain it. Cork not really settled at all yet, in spite of that breakaway goal against the run of play by Satanta O'Halvin. This is the pick up here by John Mullan, and he cracks it home. Showed great confidence. Yeah, so far, Joe, like uh, Waterford are completely on top around the field because Cork will get no ball up. Looking to get that goal, really. Dave Bennett hitting it in here, missed. Once again, Fergal Hartley to the nurse it away. Now McCarthy in to try and challenge there. Declan Prendergast at left half back. Coming once again here against Satanto Halpi. Timmy McCarthy is there as well. This is Ben O'Connor with the pick up, crossing the 45 meter line and over the sideline. Line ball. Prendergast was sticking very, very tightly to his man. So Owen Murphy from the Shamrocks Club is coming over to hit this sideline ball, but that's an interesting duel in there between Paul Flynn and Pat Mulcahy. Mulcahy now about 26 years of age, had some championship action, but uh, this is his most successful spell. Fired away by Owen Murphy, again they try to seek out the line, sails his own over his head this time. Owen Kelly is in there challenging, Sean O'Gohal been locating Wayne Sherlock, first time not successful, second time picks up again on his left-hand side, striking it way down. Tony Brown putting up the hand, it's taken there instead by John Gardner, and it's going to be a free to cork inside their own 65-metre line. Well, it's fast and furious, that was Wayne Sherlock there, nice little block down. And, uh, Every indication that Owen Kelly is going to cause problems on that side, just as John Mullan has been doing. That's the right-hand side of the Waterford attack. Gardner striking it towards Joe Dean. Can he get decent ball up there against Brian Green? Green is on him this afternoon, that was expected. Nice little tap over, and it's over by Dino. 
Jardine's first chance to attack. That's two attacks by Cork now. It's produced a goal and a point. Yeah, Jared, there's lovely free. John Gar didn't go for long and just placed the ball up to Dean. Knew he was on the run, and once he got the once he got the start to draw, just flick the flick over. Well, that was the switch they were talking about during the week in Waterford. That Brian Green, right height, right physique, to take on Joe Dean. Watch for that one. Fergal Hartley going back from centre half, beating Ben O'Connor to it towards Tony Brown, trying to gather ahead of Mickey O'Connell, running loose to Dave Bennett, half blocked. O'Connell was the last to touch it, it's going to be a line ball for Waterford. Indeed it was Owen Murphy who got the last uh, flick, or the last flick before O'Connell. Mickey O'Connell made his debut with the Championship in 1999, that was the day that Jimmy Barry Murphy put in five debutants to face up to Waterford. It worked. Murphy, cross towards Kelly, runs on here towards Owen McGrath. Goal for the point himself, he's given it everything, has he the accuracy he has? Owen McGrath from Mount Sion. The man who's come into the team to play at top of the left in a much rearranged Waterford forward line, replacing Peter Quigley. And one, four now, two. Yeah, at this stage, Joe, you have, you have, you have two corner back and corner forward. Wayne Sherlock and uh, Milan having, you know, pushing and shoving. Jim and the Sullivan switch across the right corner back. So there's a bit of bargy bargy going on down there. So let's have a look at this here again, building up with Wayne Sherlock and John Bolan. Mm. Got out of hand and the others nipped in quickly just to restore order. Referee in close attendance. Both of them will be booked. And then they're in trouble because both get yellow cards and anything can happen after that. Well, the score we have here in the stadium right now is 1-3 to 1-1. One, one. I'm just wondering, is it 1-4 one, to 1-1? One, but there's a difference between our score here on screen and the score within the ground. Yeah, Ger, I make it 1-4 one, to 1-1. One, one. That's what I thought. But uh, there was a problem in the minor match as well. The score was wrong at a certain stage there, a critical stage. And it looks like Dearman O'Sullivan is coming off. And coming in for Cork is going to be Mark Prendergast from the Piercing to make his championship debut. And he's a specialist cornerback. Well, it was a gamble they took with Dearman O'Sullivan. It wasn't widely known that he hadn't been able to train at all because of a virus. It hasn't worked out, and he's gone. And he's yeah. gone as early as the 15th minute. Yeah, Mark Prendergast would be a regular cornerback journey. He'd be used to it in there. So we've had those yellow cards issued to John Malan and to Wayne Sherlock. Prendergast into the action, is playing on Owen McGrath. So it means he's got into right corner back and Wayne Sherlock has stayed across on the left-hand side on John Milan. So tactics are plenty as James Murray steps up to hit this sideline ball for Waterford. The wind at his back. And still the score in the score in the in the ground here reads 1-3 to 1-1. We think that's wrong. Ben O'Connor taking on Owen Murphy. Gardner standing his ground, the 20-year-old knocking it invitingly down towards Atanto Halpin, but goes over his head. Good anticipation by Tony Brown, back there to help out. Spills away from him, down towards Declan Prendergast. There's assistance from Tom Feeney. Tom, who was marking Alan Brown this afternoon. One back here by the new man in Mark Prendergast. Well gathered in by Owen Murphy, setting it away here towards Dave Bennett from the middle of the field. Bennett with accuracy, puts it over the bar. He's now got two. One from play, one from a free, and it's going nicely for Justin McCarthy's team. And the score here in the ground, the score on the screen is accurate. It's 1-5 now to 1-1, four between them. Good point, but well, the marking was very, very casual. Cork have not got going. 
Waterford haven't allowed them. Their game plan's working. They're looking really hungry. They're as if saying to everybody and anybody, you think you're experts? Well, look at us. We're the monster champions, and we're not here to be beaten. Yeah, during this ball, you know, you're talking as after opening a very nice free up off uh, Pat McKay, but out there first, a bit of pushing and pulling, and Pat O'Connor's ready that there's just McKay was following and Clean will score this. Walters are happy, they're breaking ball, they're getting first with him. Nothing has happened really for Paul. And it's going to be Paul Flynn to hit it. And this to stick five points between the teams. He'll be happy. Man from passage. Just outside Port City, down Rochester direction. This will be Flynn's first point. Once the referee has sorted out matters in the middle of the field, he's going to talk to Dave Bennett and to John Gardner. Hasn't been a particularly easy match at the early stage. There's a lot of niggle going on, nothing vicious or anything like that, but the referee's been called into action time and again, too often, in fact. Waterford to stretch their lead through Paul Flynn. And he puts it over with the minimum of fuss. Waterford fans much the happier. Well, the next question, I suppose, we'll be posing before too long. Just how influential is the breeze here in third is today? And how many points up at half-time do you need to be to feel confident? And at the moment, you're caught and not hold away, regardless of the breeze. The breeze is going to be to hold. Brown gathers that one well. And we're holding on to him, in particular Mickey O'Connell for a Cork team forced into their first substitution after just 15 minutes of play. Waterford are the happier. They now have this free which Dave Bennett is preparing to take as Pat Mulcahy goes back to do his duty marking Paul Flynn. Bennett striking well so far today and that's another example comes off the stick of the goalkeeper they all count and it's over another white flag for Dave Bennett and for Waterford their strategy is working they're eager they're fit looking they're ready for the fray and they're saying to all of those people who didn't rate them forget it we're not champions for nothing and what can Donald O'Grady in his once, first Munster final as coach do to turn the tide? They've got to start winning midfield. They're being beaten badly there. Ronan Kern, a lot of the ball coming straight back into the faces of the Cork backs. Satanto Halpin beaten. This time it comes back to Owen Murphy. A very determined looking Waterford side. Great catch by Tony Brown. He's been having physio for the past three weeks. Dave Bennett is midfield ally. Inside towards Paul Flynn, bounces around in there. Flynn picks it up neatly, nice turn, and a great score by Paul Flynn. The best hurling is being played by Waterford. Right now, they're giving Cork a lesson. That's right, Jerry. the only hurling is going to find the wall, but every ball is breaking around it, and Flynn is on fire as well, but their half-back line and centre field at the moment are completely on top. But you have to emphasize that there is a very, very strong breeze. Partridge are getting no ball into the full forward line. They're playing two inside around their own now, Joe Dean and Stanto Halpin. An amazing Munster Championship where Tip were hot favourites, blown out of it by Clare. Then in came Cork, blew Clare out of it. And now Cork hot favourites being blown out of it by Waterford. Long way to go. Satanto Halpin tripping there. And it's taken by Declan Prendergast, the man from Ardmore. Bounces away off on McGrath's chest. Line ball to Cork. Lines one on this side. Pat Duffy from Kilkenny. There's Owen McGrath. Hasn't been playing particularly well, but then again, Ken hasn't been playing well either. Today could be the day, though, Joe. Well, McGrath, that's Owen McGrath's point in injury time last year. Finally made the score against Cork. 116 to 115. Looking for another great day here. Niall McCarthy, outside to Halpin, this is Satanta, the big tall man, nearly 6-6, and that has drifted away to the right, two shots at the target, one goal, one right, Cork with only two scores, Waterford with nine, seven between them, 21 and a half minutes gone in the first half. Stephen Brenner's puck out, low into the centre, Maloney was waiting, Comes instead to O'Connell, missed by Timmy McCarthy, seized on by James Murray, the UCC student. A 
up, it goes into the corner towards Owen McGraw, switching a crossover there, and it beats them all. Nine ball to call, Mark Prendergast anxious to take it. Good representation of the Pearshick players from Fair Hill of the Cork team right now, Prendergast, Gardner and the two Ohio Fiends. This is Tom Kenny, Tom Feeney. Used to be cornerback, he's playing cornerback today, but wearing number three towards Milan, being marked tightly there by Wayne Sherlock. He had a great explosive start, John Milan, could hardly keep it going for 70 minutes. And now man of the match last time out, Wayne Sherlock has been dovetailed just to keep him quiet. Tall order, he's a lively competitor. This is Owen Murphy here from the Shamrocks Club, only his second season as a senior hurler. Playing in his second Munster final, not bad going if he could collect his second medal. And as we said before the start of play, a Waterford team has never retained the Munster title. Two in a row is what they're going for. And I think full recognition by everybody who loves this sport that they really are one of the teams to reckon in the hunt for the Liam McCarthy Cup, not just the monster. Not a good one that time by Prendergast. Cork trying to retain possession, it's Gardner pulling. Andy Mullen trying to rail it up. It's interesting today, of course, that the ball they are using is uh, different from usual, although I talked to some of the Cork officials and they weren't even aware of that. But it is a slightly spongier ball, but uh, it's, I think, just as heavy as the normal setter that they've been using up to now. And I doubt it's a factor. Warburg is simply the better team so far, but that could change. Alan Brown, Ben O'Connor trying to race inside the cover. Coming out there was Brian Green. Waterford with bodies back, Green is one of them. Son of Jim, one of the great Waterford stars of yesteryear, and he's gone down, injured, 20 metres out from his own goal. Tension will be required. This is it again here. Ben O'Connor was coming across it with Joe Dean then. Down he went. So the physio and team doctor will come in to attend. And the physio in this instance is Shay Fitzpatrick, who is very much attached to the Bally Gunner Club on the outskirts of Waterford City. Dr. Tom Higgins, who comes from Dungarvan. Well, Jim Green, his dad, who was part of the team, was hammered by Cork in 82 and 20 years ago in 83 down in Limerick. Jerry was a great player, though, Jim Green, one of you know, one all stars, which is very hard to win in Vermont with a fantastic player. And he would love to see these fellas going on and winning an All Ireland title. He was mentioned in dispatches at the time when Justin was appointed as coach, so he could just as easily have been coach of this Waterford side. Yeah, they've done a lot of work with underage teams. So Ben O'Connor from Newton Chandler. His twin brother Jerry is in the subs, and of course a club made of his Pat Mulcahy he wears the number three shirt. And their dad, Bernie, coached the team to the Cork County Championship Honours three seasons ago. Right now it's 1-8 to 1-1 in the 114th Monster Hurling final. Waterford attacking. Waterford in the ascendancy, and once again, it's Ken McGrath, but the breeze just not helping it in quite as kindly as Ken was hoping. Quick puck out taken by Donald Cusack, outside to Shologo Halpin, sending it down towards his brother Satanta, catches it well, taking on his man, released inside to Niall McCarthy, Cork looking for scores, and McCarthy might provide one, and he does! McCarthy belting it over and the huge throng of Cork supporters down at the town end having something to celebrate 1-8 to 1-2 just McCarthy's third ever point in championship hurling today is his fourth big match it's Maloney inside intended for Owen McGrath seized on instead by Tom Kenny Kenny had a terrific match against Clare, hurling it into the breeze now, down towards Setanto, Halpin trying to gather once again there, his man is Declan Prendergast. Prendergast wearing number seven. 
the numbers are constant, but they don't uh, relate to the positions where they would ordinarily expect to play, like Tom Feeney here struggling, having been tapped in the ankle there. Still struggling, minus the Hurley, after him there is Alan Brown. Reinforcements arriving, the little pile-up, and the referee might throw it in at the end of it all. Fast and furious. The referee having just to come in here quickly and calm matters down. He'll throw it on the third of the 20 meter line. Hurley's flying, and it's going to be a free out to Waterford. Over a wild pull there. And Alan Brown there being called aside by the referee. Little consultation, the message is clear, no more of that, Alan. Uh, responding to the fact that uh, as core captain he was leading a team who were coming into this match really hot favourites in the last couple of weeks to beat Waterford but he was saying both sides are around the block plenty of times and they know to discard that tag of favouritism Stephen Brenner all about what happens on the day during these 70 minutes Again, John Milan causing problems. Wayne Sherlock can't bring it up onto his stick. Maloney can. Maloney striking a little block that time. And the block was by Mark Prendergast, the substitute, saving an almost certain goal attempt there by Maloney. Brown feeding it back in again. John Milan taking it. He's causing all kinds of trouble to the court for back line, but this time just inches to the right of the right-hand post and right of the target. It's very tight, Ger. Very tight. He's causing all kinds of problems, and the fans everywhere and anywhere wearing the uh, Waterford colours, sporting the Waterford colours, are enjoying it. They're ahead by six points. Round about seven minutes plus stoppage time to go to half time. Wind assisted Waterford. Doing well. McCarthy trying to keep Cork in touch. Mickey O'Connell coming onto it. In fact, it's Alan Brown striking, and Brown has put it to the left, and he's put it wide from his deep midfield position. Well, he can't wait, I'm sure, to get the team in at half-time, settle them down and say what you've been playing in the first half is simply not good enough. Waterford have shown the appetite. Cork have waited for it to happen, rather than set out to make it happen. Ken McGrath. Well, they might really find those misses very, very costly around about five o'clock this afternoon. Yeah, Ger, they're well on top of the attack over a few more points. They're up six, well on top, like, and time is ticking on. They could be up eight or nine. Should be. Donalo Cusack from Cloyne. And hurling mad East Cork getting good length into his pocket but the breeze now holding it into the half forward line Alan Brown has come very deep to try and gain some advantage in towards Joe Dean going one and one against Brian Green and the Dean Green show here and it's the killer man who was fouled free in should be another court point and Joe Dean will take it himself but indications when that was sent in there between the two of them Brian Green is not at his most relaxed or easy going as it were when Joe Dean is breathing down anyway near to that Waterford goal he was bearing on goal stopped now a chance of his second point of the match he brings Cork just a little bit closer the next four to five minutes could be very, very interesting here, from a core point of view in particular. If they can edge closer, they're now, what is it, six, or sorry, five behind. If they can edge closer, they'll feel that the, uh, the task is within them. So it behoves Waterford to stretch it a little bit more and to show that they're the dominant side of the Masters approaching the break. Tony Brown doing that. Bang on cue. Got a lot of physio treatment from Elmano Morahertig, son of Mihal, in the past three weeks in Maynooth and County Kildare. And it's done the trick. He's been up to the task, he's been fit. A 
he's been very effective. Just his presence out there alongside the lively Dave Bennett has had an unsettling effect on Cork. See that there, that's what I mean, nothing has happened for them. Alan Brown was completely on his own ball, they're just tapping up his hand, no one here, it's a goal that pops it out over the line. One of those extremely frustrating afternoons for Alan Brown. He's playing out for a near midfield, and the two men before that at the moment, Satanto Halpin and Joe Dean. In the second half, Terry will find that Alan Brown will be going right back in on the edge of the square. I think it's just a reflection of the breeze and the fact that they're being starved inside anyway. So a line ball here, which will be taken by James Murray from Tallow. Great cut, beautifully done. Nicely gathered in by Tom Kenny, good hurling and... Uh, There'll be a yellow card here, Joe. There will be a yellow card there. Oof. Owen McGrath, the player who is down. Just watch this again as Kenny comes out here. once again and the referee now calling him aside for that we've already had yellow cards issued to John Mullan and Wade Sherlock still attention be given but a yellow card as well so two for Waterford one for Cork but the important check as we approach half time is Waterford 1-9 Cork 1-3 no camouflaging it from any point of view it's been a very good first half from Waterford's point of view this leaves a nasty taste in the mouth however as Kenny is fouled unceremoniously no great attempt to challenge fairly referee absolutely spot on Waterford's game plan is very admirable overall. It's a case of everybody fighting their corners, but everybody is also playing as a as working as a unit. As we watch James Murray unable to hold possession. Timmy McCarthy trying to nip in. We haven't seen too much of him so far. Tom Feeney is the man closest to him. Tries the shot from some distance out. But all in vain. Yeah, Daft kind of a shot from an impossible position. Yeah, Joe Dean and Satanta inside on their own. Instead of crossing the ball, Joe, it's crazy kind of a shot. Those are some of the old failings that affect some of the players and affecting Timmy McCarthy right now. Again, it's Waterford applying the pressure here. Ken McGrath, just a mix-up there, sadly, with Paul Flynn. They exchange a word or two, but they had the opportunity to retain possession as we've crossed the 35-minute mark in the first half. Very noticeable, dear, dear, that both of them were at the ball for us. No Cork and both the, both Cork were behind. A solid Waterford performance in the first half, doing as much as they would have hoped to do, having a six-point lead. And once again, oh, Trangel Hartley could be in trouble here against Niall McCarthy, being called across by the referee. And this is the height of folly now. If they start to get themselves into stupid situations like this, a possible other yellow card, in fact, a probable other yellow card. Hartley, last year's captain. Tony Brown leads the team this afternoon. And it's going to be another yellow. Three yellows now for Waterford. If they lose their collective cool, they could let this match run away from them. Cork are simply not at the races, haven't really got going at all so far. 35 minutes to go, silly foul. Dean to hit the free. It looked worse, Joe, than it was, though. But it gives Joe Dean a chance to put just five between the teams, and he has put it well wide, silencing the Cork fans away to the right-hand side. The Waterford fans much the happier. A lot of work to do in the next 35 minutes. They'll be into the breeze, but they lead by six. Oh, Halpin coming first time to meet the ball. 
James Murray challenging. McCarthy was there as well. And the decision going James Murray's way. It's going to be Waterford's sideline ball. At the moment, midfield as well, you have the likes of Mickey O'Connell and uh, Dave Bennett having their own private battle. Curious kind of a match generally. The flowing hurling hasn't been there at all, really. But the object of the exercise is to win. Waterford are the possessors of the Monster Cup. They might just feel they've got uh, one hand on it already. Long way to go. Murray. Beyond O'Connell runs away from Ronan Curran. Elementary mistakes being made by some of the court backs. Out here it comes to Owen Kelly, got the first point of the match on the first attack. Plays it out to Ken McGrath, nice turn. Finding the range, but not the accuracy, and he has put it wide. That's a couple of bad misses now by Ken McGrath. Hasn't scored, hasn't really threatened Ronan Curran as much as he might. And he's aware of that. Tony Brown firing it back out of the sideline, Cork's ball. Many, many times in this first half it's been scrappy in the extreme, and yet you look at the scoreline and it says 1-9, 1-3, and there's no arguing with that. Curran firing it into the centre, away from Gardner, Ben O'Connor. One of those not to score so far, didn't really get much of a chance, here he is again, going by Owen Murphy, still running into a couple of Waterford players, looking for reinforcements, Alan Brown has it, they've got support inside, it's a tanto to Ohalpi. nobody was on him, but the ball never reached him, it's a free in instead, three minutes, three and a half minutes into injury time, at the end of this first half, Dean will take this, now will they make changes? I wouldn't think so, Joe. You know, they'll be happy enough. They're not playing very well, and they'll probably win only about five points down. They're fortunate to be just five points down. Dean has got three points, one from play, the last two coming from freeze. Four minutes now of added time, played by Pat O'Connor from Limerick. Lots of talking to do. Hammering home the message from Justin McCarthy's point of view that you have the lead, you've shown what you can do, you can retain your cup, and Cork will have to start playing as they played against uh, Clare. But will Waterford allow them that liberty? Ball has gone missing. And uh, this is another example of the new slippers. Connor had a little look at it there before the start of the match and was uh, knocking it around inside where the players run out of the concrete and it bounces rather awkwardly I have to say it's a very lively bounce bounces very high during anyway, the minor match is jumping up six seven foot off the ground Stephen Brenner pucking last puck of the first half it's half time at the Munster hurling final and Waterford have been the better team their game plan has worked they've taken the fight to court there were two goals in that first half, Satanto Halpin for Cork after six minutes, and John Mullard two minutes later for Waterford. Waterford overall played well. Michael, well, we're just checking, no changes definitely on the Waterford side. I haven't seen any changes on Cork either. Uh, it looks to be the case. The only switch, of course, Mark Prendergast coming in for Dumoulin Sullivan after 15 minutes of the first half. And that was the only change coming up to the break, and that's the change right now. So 35 minutes to resolve this Guinness Munster hurling final as Fergal Hartley breaks through from centre half back. Still Hartley trying to set up a chance beyond Maloney. Oof. A rare foray into the opposing half by the centre half for uh, Waterford. Hartley. Now maybe this gaps at the other end. Here's his man, Nal McCarthy, going through, going by the shoulder. Satanto Halpin. Oh Halpin! It stayed out somehow, and okay. Joe Dean follows up and puts it over the bar. His fourth off the crossbar, Joe let off for, for Waterford there. Oh, what have we done Real let off. The goal was there waiting, but uh, Satanto Halpin opened up the broad shoulders. This is where he struck it off the crossbar. Wow, tremendous force. But it's one point rather than three for Cork. 
the gap now down to four points. John Gardner, Sean O'Gohalpin, Tom Kenny. Feeney here trying to take it away. Comes out here towards Ken McGrath, who has gone into midfield. And the switch with Dave Bennett. Well, Waterford were out first after the break. I'm sure Justin said, we're playing OK. The game plan is doing what we intended to do. And you're working that plan. Yeah, but, uh, Cork mentors, well, they kept them back an extra couple of minutes. I'm sure they were firing rockets at this particular team. Yeah, Walter would be very happy because you'll find that the likes of M M Milan and these fellas with a pace, you know, Home McGrath, Kim McGrath will come more into it in the second half against the breeze. Now, Kin is going to open midfield and he could, it could actually soothe him out there open play. He really hasn't opened up his shoulders yet, but he's capable of doing it. And the referee is calling across uh, a couple of players. It appears to be Pat Mulcahy and Paul Flynn. They had a little set two before the match even started. Flynn left the action at one stage to be replaced by Peter Queeley because he had a blood injury. The referee once again laying down the law between the full forward and the full back. Two yellows. Ger, someone is going to get caught in these yellows because he, he's given a lot of them at the moment, so there's, there's a lot of fellas in yellows. Six so far. As we watch Ken McGrath fire it in from way out the field, and he puts it wide. Cork now with the wind at their back. They've got a point so far when they might have had a goal. And that's Pat Mulcahy with his yellow and uh, Paul Flynn also on yellow. 1 9 to 1 5. Donald Alcuzak from the town end of Semple Stadium in Perlis. McGrath. Will he play? A great deal better out there in the wide open spaces of midfield. Kept in there by Paul Flynn. Upward angle ball inside. Milan tries to make it. So to his own McGrath. Coming across here is Wayne Sherlock. Hand passed into the clear. Kenny trying to get away. The man from Grenada firing it away downfield. Trying to lift the tempo of this particular court team's play. Niall McCarthy racing onto it. Right on the sideline. Tricky one. Difficult, but he's equal to it. And he's fallen over the bar. Yeah, Jerry's playing well, like he's causing trouble going down the middle and he's after taking a good score now. Got the purple heart, they use his old brains and start getting in tight them. That's two points now he's scored against Fergal Hartley, who started the half by going deep into court territory, but he's back here now defending against McCarthy, and McCarthy has got his second three between them. Waterford, the monster champion, still leading. Ben O'Connor now. It's a much-changed Cork team in terms of attitude and approach. Not a good finish. Poor final execution by O'Connor. He's yet to score. The man on the opposite flank at left half forward, Timmy McCarthy, yet to score. Likewise, Alan Brown, yet to really get into it. The Waterford captain didn't score against Clare either. And looking through the subs list, you've got the likes of Shawnee McGrath. Jerry O'Connor, Ben's twin, also anxious to come in and play their parts. No changes so far in the second half. Waterford now looking to try and establish or re-establish their mastery once again. Good balance of control taken by Ronan Curran. Up towards McCarthy, loses the helmet, Cork retained possession. It's with Alan Brown, crossing the 60-65-metre line. Into Timmy McCarthy, chance of a score, checking inside. James Murray firing it, but he fires it wide and badly wide. Two missed chances now by McCarthy in this game, one in the first half and well on the far sideline, and one in a more central role here in the second. You yeah, were disappointed there, Joe, because not only did he a great chance, but he had two men in his outside completely free. Stephen Brenner, playing in his seventh championship match for Waterford. Broken down here by Owen Kelly, one of three Vodafone All Stars playing at this Waterford side today. Joe Dean leaving it there, anticipating Alan Brown's approach, but it's Brian Green who nips in, takes control on his left-hand side, gets it only as far as Hartley, but Hartley in space, clears well, beyond Maloney, batted down by Tom Kenny, Kenny approaching the Waterford goal with style, good poise, can he finish? The answer is yes! He's getting on top of that far wing, he's beginning to push down into, into midfield and pass it at times, Joe. 
This is a bit more like the performance that Waterford, that Cork rather, served up against Clare. And Waterford now at the receiving end, as Clare were that day. And there are two between them, 1-9 to 1-7. Stephen Brindledodger is getting great into his cock outs. And there's another example. Drops in towards the half-forward line. Ronan Curran in difficulty, waiting for support to come. It comes from Tom Kenny once again. He's playing well. Fired up against Tony Brown here. Brown's preparations very badly hampered going into the match because of the well-publicised ankle injury. He's had a lot of ankle injuries down the last number of seasons. But he was effective enough in the first half. And his very presence fired up Waterford. Right now it's John Gardner, the other number eight, trying to fire up the court crowd. But a long-range free. And the Napierschick man gets his first of the afternoon from midfield for the foul on Kenny. And now it's Cork's turn to punish Waterford emphatically. One between them, 1-9, one 1-8. One yeah, George, I wonder if they don't bring out John Malone, um, uh, Milan, a little out wing forward, and maybe switch in and Malone, because no ball coming in at the moment. And once they get started of it, these Cork fours are dangerous if the ball keeps coming. We wonder how strong that breeze and how influential it would be. Ken McGrath looking for Waterford's first score of the second half. Inside, beyond Doyne Kelly that time, runs away. Easy one for the goalkeeper, Donald O'Kilzak. Out to right half forward towards Ben McGrath, batted down, Tony Brown coming back towards it, picks it up here in midfield, former hurler of the year, that was back in 1998. Dutton Prendergast attempted clearance, blocked down, Kenny and Feeney rather coming to Waterford's rescue, towards McGrath, taken by John Gardner, looking for another, Gardner has put the sides level! And some game now, Joe, these guys are on fire, unless, unless one will change that half forward on midfield, they're going to be in trouble because there's no ball passing it. Cork 1-9, Waterford 1-9, John Gardner with two points now, one from a free, now one from play and Cork are right back in it, that's five points by Cork in eight, eight minutes of the second half Tony Brown contesting, one back here by Waterford's Owen Murphy swept away by Ronan Curran, way over towards Satanto Halpine Keeping tabs on him over there is Declan Prendergast. Prendergast trying to make some headway, close to the sideline, line ball. Line ball to Cork. Huge attendance here, over 50,000, ready to enjoy this second half. Only eight and a half minutes gone. A honeymoon couple down in Glangor and County Cork are enjoying it right now. Cork fans married yesterday, Rona and Richard. Well done and congratulations. This is Mickey O'Connell. Oh, Halpin. This is Satanta. Brother Asaki played with the minors, both of them over 6-4. Ben O'Connor racing in, awkward angle. And that has gone for a 65. It's the game's first. O'Connor was stealing inside the cover here. Waterford at sixes and sevens been blown apart in this phase of the game, but there is a long way to go. Jerry has a very tight angle there. He's going to square the back out to the forwards coming in. Well, this is really testing Waterford's mettle and resolve. And right now, Tony Brown has an arm injury, which is causing some concern. Very popular player, Tony Brown. But it's the Cork fans who are much the happier right now. Here's O'Connor, challenged by Brown, and he injured himself, falling down very awkwardly indeed, keeping the danger at bay, but at some cost to himself. Yeah, Jerry, if they have an injury, you'll probably find that the people are expecting Peter Quidditch. It could be Seamus Prendergast that they come on because he's big and strong and forceful. He came on in the second match against Limerick. And he's, uh, he's a full forward. Donald O'Grady will be much the happier. Whatever he had to say at half time has worked. It's a 65 for Cork. John Gardner will take it. And Waterford uh, looking to bring in Seamus Prendergast from Ardmore, who's a brother of Declan. Two. Gardner miss hitting this one, dropping it in towards a has been an Alan Brown. Brown kicking and he's kicked it wide, but off a Waterford player. And Stephen Brenner isn't one bit happy. They are, but they get another 65. He actually miss hit it as such a return on to be dangerous ball. You'll find that he won't miss it this one. He'll go for broke. I'm not sure if John Gardner plays golf, but his swing is absolutely superb. Lovely balance. There's no golf on his mind today, Joe. He 
he's landed it on the green another point three for Gardner two from freeze one from play and Andy Maloney is going off the Waterford team and the man who's come in is Seamus Prendergast a full forward for a full forward but he needs to get the ball down there yeah, and they're shoving Milan out to wing forward. Makes sense because he has pace. The thought which was entering my mind during the first half, how well Waterford had done with pretty limited resources overall. Justin McCarthy's expert coaching has brought the very best out of them. But now they're being faced with a massive challenge. Cork lead. First time of the match. 110 to 19. And once again it's the rating Ben O'Connor. Great pace support outside with Mickey O'Connell going for the point himself a uh, really ambitious one that one and he had players inside like Alan Brown and Joe Dean and it never came next to near them Joe we often have to weather this you know this onslaught from Cork just to hold on they're just to find out they're still in this game they're just not getting the ball up they're quite capable to get scores they can go up the ball up and you know, there's a long long way to go it's approaching the end of the third quarter as it were they were expecting this kind of assault from Cork and they've not been disappointed. Ken McGrath, low ball inside towards Prendergast, might work, doesn't quite come off initially, but Milan has it. Against three or four red shirts from Cork, Jersey was being pulled, he's fired up and it gives Waterford a chance just to settle down and draw level. Yeah. This should go over. He has pace, Joe, like the right to bring him out, he has to use that pace to take him on because he is causing trouble when he gets on the ball. Dave Bennett coming up to hit it. Dave who played Fitzgibbon Cup with UCC so he knows plenty about Cork and about Cork early. Three points so far, in fact it's Paul Flynn who's going to take it, he goes short to Milan! Goal! It worked Joe, Paul Flynn was brave enough to do it, gave it to Milan, he stuck in the net, the Cork guys are having a chat on the goal line. What a great piece of individualism from Waterford's Paul Flynn who stepped up to take it rather than Bennett and Milan fired it in for his second goal of the day. Flynn was brave, Joe, a brave man, a brave decision. That's three goals Milan has now scored, and he's playing in his seventh championship match. Great response by Waterford, and an equally good response by Cork. Ben O'Connor, first point of the day. Fast and furious, and it's 2-9 to 1-11. This has been way out of the sideline. So, 15 points to 14. Waterford have stolen back into the lead by one. Tom Kenny under it there with Owen Kelly. Sideline ball, who should be in for a cracking last quarter. Yeah, Joe Waterford will be happy because they have they've got a great ball going right back into the game. Brown back to full fitness, ready to take the sideline cut. Seamus Prendergast waiting inside. Brown, the Mount Sion maestro. Not such a great sideline cut, however. John Gardner snaps it up to Ben O'Connor. Got that last point for Cork. Huge one. Great ball. Over. You have to do something with Joe because he's gone completely on top. Like he's very, very risky and great pace. I don't know who they're going to put on him, but they want to mark him tight because he is beginning to open up. He has missed a few, but he's got two great ones. There he is again here, causing all kinds of problems, real consternation when he gets possession. So it's 112 to 29, teams level yet again. 15 points apiece. The 114th Guinness Monster Hurling final. Timmy McCarthy batting it ahead for himself. Now McCarthy and McCarthy getting in one another's way. The two McCarthys in the half forward line of McGrath. That's Ken getting it down towards Milan. Breaks out towards Owen Kelly. Kelly from Mount Sion, challenged by Tom Kenny. Kenny sticking to his task. They claim he picked it off the ground. He gets away with it. He gets away with possession as well. Everybody's after him. It's Owen Kelly, the number nine, chasing, chasing in vain. Frustrating for Waterford, ambitious by Ben O'Connor. And in the end, Cork missed the opportunity. End to end stuff. Yeah, uh, Joe, I'd say, you know, the ref, the ref is going to have a talk. Yeah. Was, that's Owen Kelly who was pulling across wildly. There it was, the 
attempted kickoff, but I think there was just enough of the half in it. Yeah, if you're from Waterford, though, Jerry, be saying to be going in the other way, it was very, very sure. tight. Now, the referee spoke to Owen Kelly. I'm not sure if he gave him a yellow card. We were looking at the reprise of the action just a little while ago. No, Jerry, no yellow card, just told him to calm down. He can't be swinging like that. So 2 9 for Waterford, 15 points, 1 12 for Cork, 15 points. 16 and a half minutes gone in the second half. Ken McGrath taking command of the situation at, center, at midfield now, wearing 11. Good positional play there by Pat Mulcahy. Great direction with his clearance down towards Joe Dean. In there against Brian Green. Brian Green, very assertive. Whips it away back down. Runs on towards Owen McGrath. Once again, it's Mulcahy going by Milan. Pat Mulcahy hand passing it outside into the clear. Tom Kenny, what a match he's playing. Everybody's after him. Nobody has to get close enough to him. Towards the Tanto Halpine. Got that court goal in the first half. Turns well. Gets well away from Seamus Brendergast. Oh, Halpine again. Led outside towards Ben O'Connor. Awkward. Right on the end line. Brown! It's a thriller. It's a fantastic score. Alan Brown! Ben O'Connor squared the ball back. And Alan Brown, who hasn't been having a break, and tripped it into the back of the net. Great run by the Santi himself, down along the middle. Maybe the pass wasn't perfect, but Ben O'Connor got on the end of it, tripped it back. Here's the pass, Joe. Not a great one. Ben O'Connor just flicks it back out, and here is Adam Brown. Bang! Gives it no chance to Stephen Brenner. Now Cocker in the driving seat. Waterford have to answer that. It looked like the chance was gone, but Alan Brown had other ideas. And it's his fourth goal ever in the championship. It's for his team. The team he captains, three points in front. Scrappy in the extreme in the first half, thrilling in the second. And Waterford are making changes. And it looks to be uh, Paul O'Brien who's going on for Owen Kelly. Well, Kelly was spoken to by the referee a little while ago. Waterford have possession, they have it through Paul Flynn. Can he be the match winner yet? Because it's anybody's game. And Paul Flynn going in beyond Mark Prendergast that time to make his point to the umpires, feeling that it might have been a 65. Yeah, Paul thought it was a 65, he was claiming it, but don't I wave it wide. They'll claim everything, they'll battle for everything. The prize is a great one. The biggest prize of all in Munster hurling. And the puck out results in a line ball to Waterford. Here it is again, Paul Flynn coming through. Now, he was claiming... But a cork man touched it last. Hard to see from that angle there. And the umpires were interested. Yeah, Derek Cork will be discussed here with Donald Cusey put the uh, puck out, out over the line, you know. And the referee, uh, Pat O'Connor, as we look at that new spongy type slitter here, have a word with uh, one of his umpires, who's Pat Horn. Back in action for the first time in 12 weeks, you tell me. He's been out with a calf injury. And uh, he wants. The Hurleys, I think, brought back, or does he know? He wants the Hurley man, I presume, to stay quiet. I think he was on the pitch chair with a, with a drink or hurling. Like, he has a red bib on him, looked very like a cock there. That's what he's on about. This is Owen McGrath from the centre of the field down towards Prendergast. This is the substitute coming forward here, Seamus Prendergast and Milan. Oh, number one! This guy has gone wild today. The hat trick man has done. 20 minutes into the second half. Goals after eight minutes. 13 minutes of the second half. And now seven minutes later, here he comes again. The man from De La Salle fires it past. Domolo Kuzak. He hit it venomously. It was a beauty. It's that left hand, Jerry. It's very, very hard to hold for stop, and he has the pace. He's brought Walker right back in the game again, just when they seem to be gone out of it. Level. 2-12. 3-9 and it's a free to John Gardner and Cork what a contest Alan Brown who's going to win the Monster Cup for 2003 Joe Dean neat turn going well back however towards McCarthy who held on to it well despite the attendance of Fergal Hartley who fouled the neck high challenge results in a free in to Cork so 18 points apiece much higher than this as it will we'll be getting out the calculators
puts pressure on Jordi in here. He's a good free taker, but these are all pressure ones. Cork are preparing Jerry O'Connor on the sideline. Dean to take four points in the match. It's gone well to the right, it's gone wide. The teams are leveled still here in Thurles in this monster final. Waterford fans must have been wondering what hit them for the opening 12 or so minutes of the second half. But they have weathered the storm and Milan's goals have everybody in good spirits supporting the blue and white. And the issue is going to be in doubt, it seems, right to the end, all the way to the 70th minute, as Ken McGrath picks it up, he's 45 metres out, hits it ambitiously, and he's put it wide. He can appeal all he wants, but he's hit it wide, and he hasn't scored so far, and he's not the Ken McGrath of the last couple of years. That scoring, Jeremy, he's getting a lot of ball, he's been in high puck out, John Garner won't be too happy, he's still keeping water in the game, once, once Cork having the ball. This is a better puck out by Donalo Cusack, right down the centre. Taken well by James Murray. Trying to keep it in play here, but uh, having a little bit of difficulty. Waterford's substitute, Paul O'Brien. Green is under pressure from Dean! A goal! This, Joe Dean! This game has everything, Gerard. The Dino has got it. Grabs the ball, round the corner back, and sticks it in the back of the net. Corker in front again in a thrilling monster hurling final. No wonder nearly 55,000 people wanted the precious tickets. Brian Green couldn't cut it out. Dean was in. Thanks a lot. And this is how it started. Fired in there by McCarthy in towards Joe Dean. And he finished clinically. It's a great final. Yeah, Jerry, it's hard to see, like, Walter after coming back with a, with a great goal from the end. It's hard to keep seeing him come back with these goals going in because, like, Park and Belton are still on top. There's very little ball going in. But both backlines, both inside backlines, the full backline that is, are quite capable of slipping up at any moment, as we've seen. With but Dean about at one end, John Milan at the other end. Who six, knows what's going to happen? Joe. John Gardner, and that is wide. Doesn't miss too many. Caught with the wind for the second 35 minutes. Nearly 23 and a half minutes gone in the second half. Justin McCarthy's out in the centre of the field, I can tell you off camera right now, as that man watches on from his vantage point. Yeah, he's checking with Tony Brown to see how he is. Because they're thinking about bringing Peter Queeley in. In fact, more than thinking about it, they're preparing him to come in. And he'll have a good, I'm sure, 10, 15 minutes at him. Will it be the winning of the match for the Munster champions? Up against it against Cork, Ronan Curran. Standing all alone there was Tom Feeney, who's discarded the black helmet. Taking it down comfortably, Ronan Curran. Hand passed outside to Mickey O'Connell, the Middleton man. Lobbing it towards top of the left, Joe Dean batting it down. Has Alan Brown away to his right, finds him. Brown's first touch not good, chance to turn around and knock it over the bar, which he duly does. And make it Cork 3-13, Waterford 3-9, a goal and a point now for Alan Brown. A great, great play by Dean, he sees him on the outside, goes on, look at the fleet back out, even though Brown's first touch is making, he still has time to take it up and have a look and flick it over the bar. And Tony Brown is about to be taken off the Waterford team, he's given everything, but it's 3-13 to 3-9. Crisis time now for the Munster champions. We're approaching 25 minutes of the second half gone. And Peter Quilly is in, as the referee is also in, trying to defuse the early action involving Quilly and Vicky O'Connell. Yeah, they are having a chat there to him, squared up to another. To be fair to the ref, he's in very fast, but it's a hard old game to referee because they're all kind of at it a little bit. Peter Quilly, who's a guard based in Yall, which is as near to Cork as you can get it. If you happen to be a Waterford hurler, handshakes all around, and they'll concentrate hopefully now on the action. It's all down to the last 10 minutes. That's a bit of stoppage time. Who's going to win this year's Monster Relic final? There'll be a quarter final place for the loser. Oh, Halpine breaks it. Timmy McCarthy trying to run after it, but beaten away from it there by James Murray. He's had a good, consistent game for Waterford. Sean O'Gohalpine steps out over the sideline. He belts it away, but he was aware that uh, the light ball was going Waterford's way. Sean 
Halpin, who's a, a tall man, well over six feet tall, but he's uh, one of the smaller of the four Halpin brothers. Asaki on the quarter-final team, beaten by Tipperary today, tells me he's about 6'4", and Satanta is about 6'4 and a bit. Half backs here, Joy, will try to be vigilant. Last time there was a big free take, was stuck in the back of the net. They're trying to take one to one at this stage. It's a sideline cut by McGrath. Jersey pulled there, the jersey of uh, Dave Bennett. Back out to McGrath it comes. O'Connell shouldering. Waterford needing a score, and McGrath can't produce. It's frustrating. Yeah, Jerry, he's a lot of ball, but just can't seem to get it over the bar. Stage in the match where Cork have taken command, but they're still only leading by four points. Well aware that John Milan could get even more as uh, Waterford bring in Alan Kerwood, another Bally Gunner player. So going off Fergal Hartley. They just need to get their method and their rhythm going again. They have been unsettled by the avalanche of scores coming from Cork. But Waterford aren't out of it by any manner of means. But it's a good phase in the match here for the side who came in as favourites, but didn't look anything like favourites for the opening 35 minutes of the game. Yeah, I have to say, Jeremy, they're turning the first 35 minutes. Like, they seem to be the driving seat now, but like, still Waterford came back from impossible positions before. Renner is poised on his goal line. Brother of Johnny, of the Warford star. That's Mickey O'Connor cutting it across towards Ben O'Connor. Trying to scoop it up to himself there. Corwin trying to get it away. The fresh man in. Everybody trying to get that ball away and take possession. It's difficult, it's tough. Timmy McCarthy back to Joe Dean. Dean having just enough latitude but not enough accuracy. The pressure remains on the Monster Champions. Seven minutes or so still to play of the 70. And I notice that Declan Prendergast to the left of goalkeeper Stephen Brenner has gone down injured. Don't look ready still exhorting his team for that one final push to see them towards the finishing line and beyond. today looking for their 48th title Waterford and Justin McCarthy looking for their seventh and rather their 49th title in Cork space they have 48 so far it shows you the difference between the two counties in terms of tradition and the past glories in the Munster campaign that's uh, Pat Mulcahy getting it away only as far as Peter Quealy trying to set up John Mullan perhaps the one man who can really win this for Waterford, taking on Wayne Sherlock, going for another one, and the final pass cut out by Shologo Halpin, Milan trying to do too much on his own, he would have expected a bit more from Paul McGrath, the wounded hero, bandaged, second half, and he's tapped it over the bar, and now there are only three between them, Paul Flynn with three points, sympathetic applause, do the fans believe it, do the team believe it, but they can still come back and win the championship once again. Flynn has given them a little bit more hope. 313 to 310. Pressure back on the Waterford backs. Brian Green stepping over the sideline. Ball stayed in. It's away by Alan Kerwin. Comes back to Dave Bennett. He was all alone when he flicked it in towards Seamus Prendergast. Mulcahy in some difficulty. The new man in there, Mark Prendergast, making his clearance. Bad one. Sideline ball to Waterford, more pressure on the court backs now. Old McGraw wanted to take it quickly. Three between them. Dave Bennett's going to hit this one. It's a game during that anything could still happen. Cork just wouldn't give the impression of being really, really confident. That last ball to be geared by Mickey O'Connor. Took all day on the block down and Waterford got a great score. The breeze is still very strong, favouring Cork against Dave Bennett as he hit it in and he hit it wide. Groans from the Waterford fans, cheers from Cork followers and Milan there and Wayne Sherlock again. Having uh, a little tangle. And Cork about to 
about to bring in Jerry O'Connor. Still has to come into the action, and the player he's going to come in for will be Mickey O'Connell, the hero when Cork played Waterford back in 1999 in the Munster semi final that year. Now he's making his way off, and he's coming in. So the O'Connor twins in the Cork forward line. Donal Cusack plucking out, breeze behind him. Four minutes of the 70 remaining. Kerwin's attempted clearance blocked down here by Joe Dean. Impish as ever, trying to steal inside, almost lost it. Has done so, falls on it, and he touched it on the ground, free out to Waterford. Well, it was all going pretty nicely from a Waterford point of view up to the break. The half-time break was the worst thing possible from their point of view. It allowed Cork get their team in, settle them down and tell them some home truths. They've grasped the message. They've also seized the initiative, and they're not going to let it slip, it would seem. Brenner and Waterford will have other ideas. Mulcahy coming out positively. Dave Bennett scooping it forward towards Owen McGrath, running into a phalanx of court defenders, back towards Bennett once again. Slightly off balance, and it's over the bar. They're still in it, and he's firing them up. Yeah, this stage, sure. Uh... Tom Feeney's going out centre-back for Walford and uh, Tim McCarthy's gone midfield for Cork. This game can still swing anyway. Cork are just not putting Walford away. Well, that's now four points for Dave Bennett. And the referee has indicated how many minutes there are left. And, uh, also notice that there's going to be a change. And coming into the action is Michael Walsh from Strad Valley. Also played in the last game against Limerick. Waterford playing in their fourth match in the Munster campaign. They carry in round one. They had two games against Limerick. And now here against Cork at the Munster final. They trail by three. And John Gardner taking on Peter Quilly. Good shoulder. Regains his balance. Fires it in. Beyond everybody. Dean was trying to keep it in play. 33 minutes are gone in the second half. So 68 minutes in all. And the match elapsed. Sure, how many extra minutes the referee will add on? He's taken off Ward McGrath, remember. Is it to be Cork's title? Will the Munster champions come back? Still fighting is Ronan Curran from centre half. Touched away here by Declan Prendergast. That's Kerwin. It's a bad ball out towards Ben O'Connor. Could finish here. Needs to and does. That could be that. Three for Ben O'Connor from the right half forward position, all coming in the second half after a lacklustre and disappointing first half. But now it's 3.14 to uh, 3.11 we see on screen. Here in the ground, they're showing 3.10. McGrath outside, into the clear, towards the new man in, Michael Walsh, looking for support for core players around him. Picked up again here by Pat Balcahi, thundering into the action in the second half. Ben O'Connor. Well, the scoreboard here locally has it at 3.14, 3.10. That's wrong, Joe. 3.14 to 3.11. 3.14 to 3.11. three between. This is going to be taken by Owen Murphy. Well, the scoreboard has been wrong at the minor in the critical stage last couple of minutes of that game, and it's wrong once again here locally. This is Flynn, and he has hit it, and hit it well. Four points now for Paul Flynn, the man who was involved in setting up the third of the goals for John Milan for Waterford. And the Waterford fans still believe it's possible. Now it's really confusing here because the team think they are now within two points, and I'm not sure that's the case. We think they're three, three behind four. Here's Satanto Halpin. In injury time, taking them all on. The man who got that stunning goal in the first half. Slightly off balance, Declan Prendergast did well to deflect it away. Cork have it back to John Gardner, kicking in vain. Puck out to Waterford, no time to lose. And Brenner says to the umpire, I'll my way fast. Dermot O'Sullivan watches as his team about to reclaim the Munster title. 
Walsh tries to flick it through, stopped there by Tom Kenny. He's had a great match and wing back for Cork. Beyond Halpine over the sideline and out. And the referee wondering what his uh, linesman's going to do here. And the linesman indicating it's going to be a line ball to Cork. What's going their way? What were called over there, believe that that was their ball? Yeah, I thought so. Six minutes and 17 seconds of the second half is now gone. Ben O'Connor. And the scoreboard locally still indicates to the Waterford fans and players they're only two points behind. We think they are three. Ben O'Connor. Good cut. That's over. That's a perfect one, Joe. Can't get better than that. Four points for Ben O'Connor. Dear Mother Sullivan celebrating. Withdrawn from the court team after 50 minutes of the first half. First half where everything went wrong, a second half when most things have gone right. They're leading deep into injury time. And the referee is calling across Paul Flynn. And Paul Flynn has already had a yellow card in this match, two yellow cards. It's a horrible afternoon for Paul Flynn and for Waterford. It's turned really, really sour for them. They're down to 14. They're losing the match. Time is almost up and John Gardner fires it confidently over. And Cork are going to win back the Munster Cup. Gardner scored four. Cork have scored a victory. Champions of Munster for the 49th time. John Gardner, one of the heroes. It didn't look possible at half time. I'm sure the half time cup of tea was replaced by something else, something a great deal stronger. Words rather than liquid by Donald O'Grady and his selectors. And they have won by four in the Munster final at score 316, Waterford 312. Cork go on to the All-Ireland semi-finals as we go down to the sideline for comment and to Jim Carney. Donald O'Grady, congratulations to you. You did this as a player today. It's different, but very sweet, I'm sure. Thanks, Jim. Yes, it was a good performance. We uh, wanted to chose to play with the wind in the first half, hoping to build up a good score. And I think we hung in there. We didn't play very well in the first half. But I think the second half performance showed what we were capable of, and I was very, very pleased with the win. And they did play well in the first half, in fairness. They did, but I mean, we, we said to them, look, it's a gale of breeze, right? It's going to be very difficult to play against it. If we're, if we're against it, just hang in there. We know Waterford will come out for the first 20 minutes, as they have done in previous games, and that they give it all, right? And we were just hoping to be uh, there with the other boats, and five points wasn't a huge lead um, at half-time. And you were hoping for the first score in the second half? Well, we were hoping for all scores in the second half, to be honest with you, right? Yeah. But things worked out well, and I'm very pleased, I must say. Sure, Dean, don't know. Missed just pretty straightforward for you, I think. Next ball, he put it in the net. Well, the way I look at it, Jim, is it takes uh, from 1 to 15 to get the ball uh, up, up here, and I think it was a first-class performance from all 17 players that we used, and I, I'm very grateful to them, I must say. Yeah, and I don't want to go digging again into individuals, but your half-back line, Sean Ogue, we know, and we admire him so much, but the other two lads, the whole country wouldn't have known an awful lot about them. That line was outstanding. Well, that's their job, Jim. Their half -back and they'll just stop up the play and to clear it like and did it that way today, I must say. You know, two big performances back to back, that's what Cork fans were looking for, they've got it. Um, well, we, we, we move on, we, we were hoping to make progress at all times and we move on from here and that's what we were hoping to do and it is nice to progress out of Munster. Yeah, and the final word on it, back door or front door, whatever, the Munster Championship, the Munster Final is still a hugely important occasion, what does it mean to you? Well, i tell you what it means to me, Jim, I mean, the backroom team that I have, the medical team, the fellow selectors, right, and the trainers, They've done excellent work, right? And I think for them, I think there's great satisfaction. And it was a great occasion. Both Cork and Waterford fans. Obviously, some fans have to be disappointed. I'm delighted that the Waterford fans are disappointed and other fans because they're the best in the world. So, thanks very much. Great job by you and your team. Thank you. So, Donald O'Grady and his selectors then doing their job well. And Sean O'Gohalby now talking with Jim Carney. Yeah. Sean O, congratulations to you. Uh, the fans are in on top of you there. You've hardly had time to draw your breath. We would ask you just for a reaction to that, Sean O, because very sweet for you, and particularly the two lads playing beside you in the half-back line, because that line, you really did your stuff. I mean, in the second half in the game, time to open up, Tom and Rowan and Kim and the Rowan. To be honest, now, they were the kind of the launch pad for the win in the second half. I suppose, looking back in the game of two halves, Waterford, 
they hit us for everything in the first half. And going in at half time, realistically, we're still in with a chance. Because I don't know, viewers mightn't realise the win factor involved. It was very heavy, so we had it in the second half. And we just got the goals, and Jim, another muscle title, we're delighted. But congratulations to you, Sean, and great to see you back playing as good as ever. All right, Jim, thank you, Mike. So, Sean O'Go Halpine there and his brother Satanto winning their Munster medals here. And it's time for the presentation. Alan Brown is the core captain. Christy Cooney, of course, is the Munster chairman making the presentation. For an exhibition of hurling. Waterford indeed have been tremendous monster champions. You had an outstanding game today. Keep your heads up and I'm sure you'll be back in the future. But today belongs to Cork. And in the presence of Michael Whelan of Guinness, it gives me great pleasure now to present the trophy to an outstanding captain and a great black rock man in Alan Brown. It's the Monster Cup. Doesn't have a name. It's Cork's. For the 49th time, Cork champions in Munster once again. Anna Hartsarum, and Corin Shaw, back at Corson Firm, August the Pais Chief, that's Corky. Elaine Gwail got gone, so I'd like to say, up to 10 minutes ago, the proudest sporting moment that I ever had was leading this Cork team out out to the field in Turles. I tell you, accepting this cup on behalf of that Cork team, it's a, it overshadows that by a million times. This is the proudest sporting moment of my life to accept this on behalf of such a tremendous Cork team. We're back. <laughs> I like it. There's a lot of people I'd like to thank. I'd like to thank all the supporters who travel in their thousands. Who, when we, when we found the coin top, he raised our spirits. And even though we went behind the first half, he never let us down. He always kept saying, kept roaring us on. So we appreciate that very, very much. Next, I'd like to thank, I'd like to thank the Cork management team. We were in the, I think we were in the depths of despair last year. But I think you'll agree that the attitude from both the players and his current management team has brought us back out of that.